What's up guys, Kudokun here, and today we're going to talk about probably the most divisive game that's ever come out in the Pokemon franchise, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Now me personally, I went with Pikachu because uh, Pikachu is better than Eevee because he's much cuter, but you know, if you disagree, that's fine, everyone's allowed to have their own opinion, even if their opinion is wrong. Before I even get into the review, I want to discuss something that I've been seeing in the YouTube comments and on the Facebook posts and pretty much anywhere anyone is talking about this game. Strange trait people seem to adopt when they're talking about media like anime or video games or whatever they're into is if they don't like something or if something doesn't appeal to them, they'll start assigning all of these random things that must be wrong with it, even if it's things that they personally don't like about it themselves. And on the other side of the fence, everybody who enjoys something will just brush off every legitimate criticism as though their form of media could not have been improved with a few adjustments. The honest, boring truth about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is, it is a fine and very well-made game with a lot of nagging problems that didn't need to be there. So when I talk about this game, I am going to talk about it as objectively as I possibly can. So just because I dislike something doesn't necessarily mean it's a problem with the game, and just because I like something doesn't necessarily mean it was the best way Nintendo could have handled it. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about a video game. So first things first, let's talk about the graphics. The game does look really nice for what it is. It really doesn't reach the levels of any of the more impressive games that have been on the Switch so far. Uh, I personally hold up Xenoblade Chronicles 2 as the technically best looking game on the Switch, and then of course you've got the big hitters like Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, but as far as games in the Pokemon franchise go, this is a very, very good looking game with some textures that some people are overlooking. The backgrounds and small details on each of the Pokemon, for example Pikachu's tail, have some interesting textures and design work that you don't necessarily appreciate the first time you see them, but you'll notice the more you look. The chibi art style and the bright colors are going to appeal to a lot of people, although me personally, I do kind of want them to start moving towards a more Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon Gale of Darkness-ish style, but that's my personal opinion. Nintendo absolutely killed it with the music for this game. It's an orchestral soundtrack that's probably the best renditions I've ever heard of some of these classic tracks. Every time I enter a new town, my ears have an orgasm as I'm caught between how nostalgic I am for the old music and how much better the music sounds in 2018. The partner Pokemon are really adorable too, and there's so much interactivity with them that just couldn't be there in the original Pokemon Yellow, so I'm really glad they went back and added some features to make that feel more unique. They'll search out treasures and sniff flowers and look at water fountains. Everything they do is adorable, and it's a nice surprise to see what they're going to do whenever you see them do something new. But getting off of looks and sounds, we have to start talking about the gameplay. There are things about the game that I really love, and I think it's worth noting that Nintendo is doing what they can to keep the old formula feeling as fresh as possible, but there are some very unnecessarily stupid game design decisions that went on here, so for every step forward, it feels like they took a step backwards too. First of all, Pokemon Eevees and Ivies were taken out completely. In fact, the entire leveling system has been reworked. Abilities weren't even kept. Honestly, the only thing that was kept from the old days was the natures, which was a very strange idea to keep. Personally, I didn't mind this at all. In fact, I thought it was pretty great. I think it was a cool idea back in the day to have Pokemon with individual stats, but all it really did was make it so that if you wanted to get the most powerful Pokemon for competitive play, you either had to sit and grind for days on end for the best teams, or obviously you had to hack your game and manipulate your save file to give you Pokemon with the highest stats. Taking those elements away reduces the need for hacking and cheating, and it makes Pokemon a lot more accessible. Now I understand accessible is a word that makes your ears cringe up when you hear it, but you have to understand that sometimes elements stop working at some point, and I think the idea of IVs and EVs stopped working at some point and need to go. 
ability shouldn't have been taken away, though. That that was definitely a misstep on Nintendo's part. In fact, if anything, I think more abilities should have been added to make up for the fact that IVs aren't around. There's our step forward, and now our step back. Nintendo brought in the CP system from Pokemon Go. I kinda sorta hate the CP system, because we took the IVs away, so this random element to how good a Pokemon is was taken out, and you didn't have to worry about it anymore. But now there's a new random element in play where if you catch multiple Pokemon, you have to worry about what their CP value is and which CPs are better than other CPs. They essentially didn't even take IVs out of the game at all, it just got integrated into the CP system. I feel like Nintendo was on the right track with just getting rid of the IV system altogether. Making it meld into the CP system is just asinine. Personally, I want to see Nintendo finally revamp the battle system for Pokemon because I think we've hit the end of how creative they can get with adding new features to the battle system. So I think taking those steps back so that we can start looking at a new way to do the battles is better, but that's just my opinion. The next thing that we have to talk about is random encounters. This is the most jarring and strangest change that Nintendo made with this game, in that there are no more random battles. If you do happen to see a Pokemon, you can run into them, and then you can try to catch them, or you can run away. This system kinda sucks. Like, a lot. You get experience from catching Pokemon, so honestly the only real way to go out and grind your Pokemon up is to go catch a bunch of Pokemon that you don't need to get the experience points. It's also dumb because the point of random battles was to test out different Pokemon and see how well you like certain Pokemon against other Pokemon. But now you can only battle during trainer battles, which means if you want to try out a new Pokemon, you have to do it in a trainer battle, and if you can't find a trainer to fight against, then you just don't get to see what that Pokemon does. For a game that was so close to bringing Pokemon back to its roots, and really making collecting and trying out new Pokemon fun again, this is such a dumb change for them to make. But... But... Catching Pokemon is a lot of fun, and I really like the new system. For those of you who don't know how catching Pokemon in Pokemon Go works, essentially you manually throw a Pokeball at the Pokemon and you're trying to hit them somewhere on the body. You'll see one white circle around the Pokemon you're trying to catch, and then a colored circle will start shrinking towards the middle of the Pokemon. What you're trying to do is throw a Pokeball in the colored ring as the ring is getting smaller and smaller, and the smaller the ring is and the closer you can get to the center, the higher your catch chance is. Something I find kind of weird is they don't explain the ring system to you very well, because everything else in the game is almost over-explained, but that one mechanic is something that they really don't teach you about. Honestly, for a while, I was kind of throwing it when the two outer rings were matching each other, because I play rhythm games and that's normally how it works. But after a bit of trial and error, it becomes pretty obvious what you have to do. I just think it's strange they don't explain it to you up front. If the colored ring is green, then it means you have a high catch chance on that Pokemon. And if the colored ring is anything else, then you can feed them items to make your catch chance go up or use a higher brand of ball. I honestly really like this system too. It gives you a nice idea of how well your catch chances are going to be and how many items you need to use. Like if the ring is yellow and you use one raspberry to calm the Pokemon down and make them easier to catch and the ring goes to green, then you know that that's all you have to do and you don't have to start testing other things out. It's very clear, very concise, and I love it. While we're here, we might as well talk about the Pokeball Plus, which is an attachment that you got if you decided to get the special edition of the game, which cost $100. You can also just buy it separately for $50, although whether or not you actually buy it is uh, something that we should probably talk about later. The Pokeball Plus is essentially a Joy-Con made specifically for playing Pokemon Let's Go. The Pokeball Plus has a control stick in the middle, and it can be pressed in to simulate pushing the A button, and it also has a button on top that can simulate the B button, and you can waggle it around to simulate pressing the Y button. If you're wondering how you play the game with it, um, the entire game is built around playing with one Joy-Con anyway, so you essentially only play with the Pokeball and nothing else. 
Catching Pokemon is really where having this thing shines, because as lame as it might sound, actually throwing a Pokeball at the screen to catch Pokemon feels pretty darn good. The ball simulates your throwing motions shockingly well, and even though I wouldn't say it's the best way to go around catching Pokemon, it certainly is the most fun. My only real complaint with using the Pokeball is your natural instinct is to throw it overhand, because that's how you would normally throw a ball, of course, and that's how Ash throws it in the show. But if you try to do that here, then the Pokeball almost always goes over your target, so what you have to do is throw it either like a frisbee or sort of underhand toss it towards the screen, and those are the best ways to use it. You can also throw it overhand and like at the ground or just do it really, really slowly, but it feels so unnatural and awkward that you might as well just find a better way to do it. Another cool thing about the Pokeball is it has a finger grip, so you can actually let go of the Pokeball after you throw it, and it feels a little more realistic. I have no complaints about the Pokeball when it comes to catching Pokemon, in fact it might be the most fun part of the entire game. But unfortunately it really sucks as a controller. Normally, when you're holding a Joy-Con or any other controller, you feel a straight edge against your hand, so your thumb never loses its orientation, and you can always understand which way to press for up, down, left, and right. But because this thing is a tiny ball, I found myself all of the time mixing up my directions and having to readjust the Pokeball in my hand. This was especially true after catching a Pokemon, because if I caught a Pokemon and then tried to move, I would often be holding the Pokeball in a weird way and have to readjust it before continuing the game. Pressing the control stick in for the A button is also a real hassle, considering the A button is the most used and important button that you press. So many times I would accidentally move the control stick in a direction before pressing it down for the A button and accidentally going into a menu I didn't want to and then I would have to go back out of that menu and come back in and it just happened way too many times for me to not mention it. The B button at the top of the controller was fine, I didn't have any real problems with it, although waggling to use the Y button was a bit problematic at times. It's just nothing compares to how awkward it feels to try and press the control stick down for the A button and going into a menu you didn't want to go into. Also, can we talk about the controller support for this game? It's so weirdly limited. When you're playing in handheld mode, the buttons are mapped pretty normally. It uses both Joy-Cons and it feels like you're playing on an actual controller. If you detach the Joy-Cons and play on your TV or with your Switch propped up in front of you, all of a sudden, you can't use both Joy-Cons anymore. You have to switch to using a one Joy-Con control scheme. I feel like a lot of the nagging issues I have with the Pokeball as a controller would go away if I could just use a regular Joy-Con during regular gameplay and then only use the Pokeball when I'm in a catching scene. Being forced to only use one Joy-Con at a time is painful, and if you like playing with the Pro Controller, oh boy, I've got some <laughs> unfortunate news for you, my friends. That Pro Controller is probably going to be collecting a lot of dust, because from what I can tell, you cannot use a Pro Controller at all. It's Joy-Cons, the Pokeball, or handheld, and that's it. This is just an example of a dumb, unnecessary decision on Nintendo's part. There's no reason that if the buttons can be mapped to regular controls when it's in handheld mode, that it can't do the same thing out of handheld mode, and you can't just use whatever control scheme you want. Another asinine thing about the control scheme is, for some reason, the touchscreen just doesn't work at all. In Pokemon Go, you can throw a Pokeball by flicking your finger across the screen. It's fun, and it takes a surprising amount of skill. When I was playing in handheld mode and I went into a wild Pokemon encounter, I kept instinctively wanting to flick my finger across the screen to throw a Pokeball, and it just didn't work. The only way you can catch Pokemon in handheld mode is if you move the switch around to where the center of the Pokemon is and press the A button. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, but I'm saying it's kind of boring, considering Pokemon Go found a way to do it better. This shouldn't be doing Pokemon catching worse than Pokemon Go. I do enjoy that random battles were taken out of the game, and now you can actually see the Pokemon on the screen and decide whether or not you want to run into them, battle them, or run away from them. 
If you want to grind up your Pokemon, you, you gotta catch them all, of course, but if you don't want to, then you don't have to. Another neat thing they added to the game is some Pokemon will be glowing red or blue. Blue Pokemon are slightly weaker Pokemon, known as Tiny Pokemon, and they're a bit easier to catch but have slightly weaker stats. And then you have Red Pokemon, or Big Pokemon, and they're harder to catch but they have slightly higher stats. Something kind of disappointing about this system though is the Pokemon aren't actually tiny or actually big, like as in size, they're just different stat-wise, and I think that's a little bit lame. I think making them slightly bigger or slightly smaller would have been a nice little design change. Another neat little change is you have a lot of convenient features available to you now that you normally had to go somewhere specific to do in the mainline Pokemon games. One small example of this is you can now nickname your Pokemon at any point in the game, and it doesn't ask you if you want to nickname every Pokemon you catch anymore. So now if you don't want to nickname your Pokemon, the game never prompts you for it, and it's not much of a hassle anymore. But if you ever do want to nickname your Pokemon, not only can you nickname them, but you can change the nickname at any time. The bigger and much better change, though, is you now always have your PC boxes on you at all times. So, remember how you used to go to a PC in a Pokemon Center to switch out your party Pokemon? Well, now every time you catch a Pokemon, it goes into your inventory, and you can go and switch up your Pokemon in your party at any point in the game. This is a huge change, and it's probably my favorite change of the entire game. Now that you don't have to go to a Pokemon Center to switch out your Pokemon anymore, you can switch out your Pokemon on the fly, even between trainer battles. So if one of your Pokemon gets fainted and you don't really want to go back to a Pokemon Center or revive them, then you can just switch that fainted Pokemon with a new Pokemon and continue going. You can also do this with any Pokemon that are getting really low, or you just want to switch out because you want to try something new. Experimentation and trying new things is part of what makes the Pokemon battle system so fun and addictive, so having the ability to switch up your team at any point is just a very, very good design decision. And it's a change that I hope sticks to the main series next year. Of course, though, that brings us to our next little <laughs> nagging concern, and that's catching Pokemon as your main source of grinding means that your boxes are going to be filled with trash Pokemon all of the time. The game tries to make you feel better about it by telling you that it's super easy to find Pokemon that you want to play with, but it's a big fat liar because the sorting system is kind of really bad. One of the sorting options should be to bring one of each of your strongest unique Pokemon to the top and then all of your duplicates that are weaker than them to the bottom, but that just doesn't exist. You have to sort it like that yourself, and if you're caught 30 to 50 Pokemon at a time, then that's a little bit of a hassle. Thankfully though, there is a returning feature from Pokemon Go that makes this a bit less of a hassle, because you can actually turn those Pokemon into candy to help boost your stats. Earlier I was talking about how each Pokemon has a unique CP, and that CP can actually be raised by feeding each Pokemon candy, and you get candy from giving your Pokemon to Professor Oak through the menu. You get candies based on what kind of Pokemon you give the Professor, and it's a pretty efficient system because you can then use those candies to level up your Pokemon's individual stats. As you level up certain stats, you start needing more and more of the same kind of candy to keep leveling up that stat, but that just makes it feel like there's a decent sense of progression. So even though it is a bit of a chore to go and catch loads of the same Pokemon over and over again, I am at least thankful that there's a system for efficiently getting rid of them and giving you a reward for actually going out, grinding, and catching all of these Pokemon in the first place. A nitpick I have for this system though is there's no bulk feeding, so if you want to feed a Pokemon like 20 candies, you just have to sit and push the A button over and over and over again until they've eaten them all. Um, I have no idea why you can't just feed a Pokemon multiple candies at the same time, but whatever Nintendo, whatever, guess we can't have everything. I hear a lot of people complaining about the difficulty. Personally, I don't think the game is that much easier than the original Red, Blue, and Yellow, but I guess that's just me. If you understand tight matchups and you're willing to grind, then every single challenge in a Pokemon game can be beaten very easily. That's just the nature of the games. The problem with trying to make a game like this more quote-unquote 
difficult is it's just going to come down to leveling up all of the enemy trainers Pokemon which means you're just gonna have to go and grind your Pokemon until they're a high enough level to beat their Pokemon which just adds a bunch of unnecessary grinding to the game. I don't see how that's a positive change, I don't see what everybody wants them to do about it. Personally, I think the game moves along at a fine pace. If you're just going through the game casually and you're not grinding up your Pokemon, then you're gonna hit some points where you're going to take some damage and have some of your Pokemon knocked out, and if you are going and grinding up your Pokemon, then the game is going to get a lot easier. That's just the nature of the game. But if you do want to talk about the game being too easy, then let's talk about the next feature that they added, multiplayer. Something I was very interested to see in motion is the multiplayer that is now in this game. This is a couch co-op Pokemon game, which we have wanted forever. You just hand a Joy-Con to another person, they shake it around, and a second player emerges from the sky and you can play together. They can't really do much to interact with the world, but you can choose to battle together and catch Pokemon together, which if you have like a little sister, a little brother or something they want to play along to, or if you have a young kid you're planning on getting this game for and you maybe want to play along with them without completely taking the controller away from them, this is actually kind of a neat little feature, but I feel like two friends that are going through this game are going to find this feature pretty useless. When you're catching a wild Pokemon, both players have a Pokeball they can use, and if you both throw the Pokeballs at the same time, and they both land inside of the circle when catching a Pokemon, then your catch chance goes up by a lot. It takes a lot of coordination if you're playing with two people, but the problem with this is it can be exploited really easily by just always playing in two-player mode, and then using both Joy-Cons yourself, to throw them both at a Pokemon and raise your catch chance. Everyone's system comes with two Joy-Cons, so it's not like you're not going to be able to use this. Just take both of your Joy-Cons, bring in the second player, go into a Pokemon encounter, and throw both of your hands forward at the same time to guarantee that you get the higher catch chance. If you have a second player out when you go into a trainer battle, then both of the players will throw out a Pokemon against your opponent's one Pokemon. This happens even if your opponent has multiple Pokemon, you will always double team whatever Pokemon they have out, which is actually unfair. I don't see why they couldn't just give the trainers you're fighting two Pokemon, or if they have more than one Pokemon, bring it out and have a doubles battle. It's just so unfair that you, your side gets two Pokemon, their side gets one Pokemon, so you're pretty much going to win all of your battles because you have double the Pokemon power out. It makes it feel like the multiplayer mode is more of a cheat code that the game gives you than an actual feature of the game. Playing multiplayer with somebody else isn't even that much fun because of how much easier it makes the game, and I wish they would have found a way to balance this. Something that absolutely baffles me over the multiplayer in this game though is for some ungodly reason you can't bring in another player and then have a Pokemon battle with them using your Pokemon. Nintendo. People don't want multiplayer to make the game they're playing easier. They want multiplayer so they can play a game with their friends. And if Pokemon is the game they're playing, then chances are Pokemon battling with each other is one of the things they would like to do. It is mind-numbingly dumb that my friend and I can't just sit down play a round of Pokemon using the Pokemon that I've collected. The multiplayer literally is just a way to make the game easier. Speaking of making the game easier, let's talk about another new little feature that Nintendo added. There are now special moves that your partner Pokemon can learn. Uh, for Pikachu, it's Zippy Zap, which is essentially like Volt Tackle, but they named it Zippy Zap for whatever reason. These moves are really, really unfair and dumb. Look at Pikachu's Zippy Zap move. You always go first, and it is always a critical hit. I... Well, I... I don't even understand what the thought process was behind this. This is literally a Z move, but it's a move that you can use every single turn. Granted, you don't have to use it, you don't even have to learn it, but these were the one very significant change to the battle system that they made for this game, and it's specifically 
for making the game as easy as possible, not for adding any depth or strategy to the game. It just turns the entire game into a joke. Let's go fight Misty, guys. You want to go fight Misty? Let's go get our gym badge. Zippy zap. And dead. Next. Zippy zap and dead. Oh yeah, this is definitely fair. Uh-oh. Misty's down to our last Pokemon. Starmie. Uh, well let's zippy zap real quick. Uh-oh! I have to use two zippy zaps on this Pokemon. Man, I had no idea the game was going to get so difficult. Talk about a real game changer, I can definitely see why this is a gym leader battle. There is one new feature they added to give the game some difficulty that I think is pretty interesting. They have something called a trainer coach in some areas of the game, and that trainer will have significantly more powerful Pokemon than other Pokemon in the area, but if you can beat them, then you get some kind of special prize, like a TM or as a rare item. At least until you get to the end game and you unlock the master battles. The game has a lot of references and nods for old Pokemon fans. One of the ones that they've shown off extensively is Jesse and James being in the game, just like Pokemon Yellow. This is pretty great, and they're pretty funny. Uh, they do give off some of the classic lines, like Team Rocket is blasting off again. One thing that bugs me is for some reason Meowth still cannot talk. I do not understand why they won't just let Meowth talk. He doesn't even have to have the Brooklyn accent if you don't want to give it to him. Just let him say something. Anyone who knows who Jesse and James are are going to know that Meowth talks, so just let him talk. I was a bit disappointed at what they did with the rival, but then after you beat the first gym, you actually run into Gary Oak himself, and uh, that's pretty cool. They went back with his original name of Blue, which is totally fine with me, and he's just as cocky and arrogant and adorable as he has always been, and it's just an amazing encounter. There are also some more subtle nods, like I was happy to see the return of I Like Shorts, They're Comfy and Easy to Wear Kid. Everyone loves good old youngster J uh, Ben? Ben. Nintendo. But you know, you, you know, you know that's not his name. That's such a red, it's such a famous meme. Why would you bother changing his name from youngster Joey to youngster Ben? It, do it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense at all. The last thing I really want to talk about is the Pokeball Plus and Pokemon Go. I'm not a fan of Pokemon Go anymore, but I went ahead and tried out the features of the Pokeball Plus with Pokemon Go, and it's exactly the same as the Pokemon Plus attachment, so there you go. If you don't already know, you can attach this to Pokemon Go, and if you happen to pass by a Pokemon Stop, or if you happen to pass by a wild Pokemon that you've already caught, then you can push a button on the Pokemon Go without opening the app to automatically get that Pokestop or catch that Pokemon. I think if you're interested in using it for that kind of functionality though, you're better off doing it with the Pokemon Go Plus, because the Pokemon Go Plus is a really small, simple attachment that you can put on like your belt loop or on a backpack or something, but with the Pokemon ball, it's just going to flop everywhere because it's a giant, heavy, actual controller and it's just a lot less convenient to have around than the Pokemon Plus. But if you're already getting the Pokeball for Pikachu and Eevee, then just letting you know that the functionality's there. You could always wear it as a necklace or something, I don't know. One other thing about the Pokeball that I happen to not mention is you can actually put a Pokemon from Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee into the Pokeball and have it walk around with you, and it'll collect experience points as you're walking around, so that's a pretty cool little thing too, but because the Nintendo Switch is portable, I don't quite see it as a big benefit, but if you happen to like the Pokewalker back from the Heart Gold and Soul Silver days, this is going to give you a kick. And now that we've been talking for about half an hour, let's start wrapping this up. If you're already a big fan of Pokemon and your draws to the Pokemon franchise are the world and the exploration and the charm of the game over the actual just battle mechanics, and you also play Pokemon Go and you enjoy it, then I give this game a worth it price of $50. I just can't think of a scenario where the game would be worth its full price of $60 unless maybe it came with the Pokeball Plus, but it 
doesn't, and it's a shame considering a regular mainline Pokemon game is $40, has more gameplay, and Heart Gold and Soul Silver came with the Pokewalker attached. If you do think the game is worth $60, then that's totally your prerogative and you've probably bought the game already, so don't listen to me. But I do think you have to like the Pokemon franchise and also have some fun with Pokemon Go in order to get your full enjoyment out of this game. If you're someone who just really likes Pokemon, but you don't play Pokemon Go and you're not crazy about all of the new features, then I give this game a worth it price of $30. The charm is there, and it is a very fun game, and I think you owe it to yourself to at least give it a try. A lot of people are going to turn you off of the game because they talk about what the game is lacking, but one of the things that people cannot explain about the game is just how much charm and fun is in it. It's something you have to play for yourself to really understand, and I think if you can find it for around $30, then it's going to be worth it for you. Finally, if you mainly play Pokemon for the competitive setting, and you don't really like the single-player story modes in these Pokemon games, and the charm doesn't really affect you as much as it does other, more casual fans, then I still give this game a worth it price of about $20. Again, I think this is just a fun game that most Pokemon fans are going to get some enjoyment out of regardless of how you feel about the franchise, and it's difficult to explain without actually sitting down and playing the game for yourself. Really quickly, I also want to give my thoughts on whether or not I think you need the Pokeball Plus. Uh, I'm just going to say it right now, I don't think you need it. I think the game is just fine without it. I think most of the time, if you want to play the game comfortably, you're going to be playing in handheld mode anyway but I won't deny that it does make catching Pokemon more fun if you're playing on your TV, and it is still useful for Pokemon Go if that's what you're into. If you absolutely have to have the Pokeball Plus, then do not, I repeat, do not pay any more than $25 for it. It's a neat little gimmick, but at the end of the day, it's still just a plastic toy that's not compatible with any of your other Switch games. It's something you're not gonna be using that often if you're playing in handheld mode. And in some aspects, it actually makes playing the game worse. So if you absolutely have to have it, do not pay the $50 for it. Eventually, you will be able to find one for about $20 to $25. Get it then. Pokemon Let's Go is just a fun, charming adventure into the world of Pokemon. The boring truth is it really is just a fun Pokemon experience, despite the game design flaws. Some people will like it, and some people will hate it, and I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And don't be shy about leaving your friend codes down below.